Hello everybody, welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. As always, we have six races to have a look at and it is quality all the way. The main focus, of course, being on the Coral Eclipse. And we'll focus on Sandown mainly, but we'll go to Haydock Park as well. Got some great stuff and a brilliant race to start with. The Coral Dragon Stakes, which took place at Sandown on Friday. This is how they bet. It was over five furlongs. It was a listed contest, Kaboo 15 to 8, a bit weak in the market. Instinctive Move was 100 to 30 and well backed. Mojo Maker 100 to 30 and Fearby 13 to 2. Stall 6 is what you want to be looking at, for that is where Fearby comes from. And this is a fantastic performance from a sprinting two year old, one that belonged at Royal Ascot, really. For the time that this horse has put up, is very, very good indeed for a two-year-old. You've got to be impressed with what you see here. Phoebe, just out towards the outside, white cap, getting a little bit of a toe into the race that was run at a solid gallop. They went pretty hard through the early stages of this contest. And Phoebe is just tucked in here in behind, just waiting to challenge down the outside. And the turn of foot and the acceleration that this two-year-old shows is quite remarkable. This horse belonged in the Norfolk Stakes at Royal Ascot. That would have been the place for Fearby. For the last three furlongs, he flew in 36.7 seconds to not just win, but to thrash these by five lengths. Now here you wouldn't imagine he's going to pick up and clear away right on the outside there, but that's exactly what he does. And he puts Mojo Maker away and Kaboo as well. Watch him cross the road crossing, stumbles a little bit just there half jump the crossing, but then he regathers his momentum under PJ McDonald and clears right away. He's got a very good time form speed figure for this performance and he is going to be a force to be reckoned with when it comes to two year old sprints over the minimum trip going forward. A landmark winner for a new trainer, uh, Edward Bethel, who's uh, doing very well with the horses that he runs. We'll take have a look at uh, the head on now. You'll see that stumble at uh, the road crossing. And he's a little bit outpaced in the early stages. We'll just pick him out. He's just there with the, the white cap. He's got a little bit of cover at uh, this stage. I think Sandown, the rail's been good on the sprint course and he didn't get to race against that. Heaven knows what he would have done if he'd been able to race against the rail. He, he would have won by further, I think. Now, how strong is this race? Well, it's okay. It's not very strong but he could do no more than he did. He's absolutely annihilated them. And in saying that, there's an important point to make. He's not bred to be as good as he is. He's by Havana Gold out of one cool cat, a one cool cat mare. Now, that is not a pedigree that says we've got a really, really good sprinter on our hands. Then what it does mean though is Edward Bethel has got every ounce of ability out of this two-year-old. He's done a remarkable job with him and he's got him to be able to fly home in the latter stages of this race in 36.7 seconds. That is flying through the final three furlongs. Uphill, remember, and with a little bit of ease in the ground as well. That is a truly remarkable performance from uh, this uh, little horse. Uh, not much size about him. Will he train on? Will he go forward? Who knows? But he's good at the moment, that's for sure. So let's sum up what he actually achieved. Firstly, Edward Bethel, well, he's a young move-up trainer. There is no doubt about that. And this is a landmark success for him. This horse has got an average pedigree, but this trainer, this Edward Bethel, he's exploited this horse's ability to the max and he might squeeze more out of him yet. What else can we say? Well, He's up there with the best two-year-old performances of the year at a sprint trip at five furlongs. He'd probably get six, but he's pretty quick. And the final three furlongs, which I've cited a couple of times, 36.7 seconds was just so much better than anything that his rivals could do. A horse to conjure with in two-year-old sprints. Time now to move on to the Coral Eclipse, the feature event of the week. And it was a race short on runners, but plenty of quality in there. And a complete and utter world-class superstar, in my opinion, in the shape of the very well-backed Marx Basilica, who went off at even money. He'd been available at round about 11 to 8 earlier in the day, but backed into odds on and then just slight drift to evens just before the off. Mishrif, 
uh, provided stern opposition to 9-4 to four following on from his Shima Classic success. A Dave was 7-2 to two and the ground was just about right for him. It was good to soft, a little bit softer than on day one. And El Drama was the outsider at 28-1. to one. Let's see how the Coral Eclipse uh, panned out and send them on their way. I think the first thing to realise about this race was that it was very steadily run. They crawled in the early stages. A Dave takes them along. Mishrif, you can see his head bowed low, just a little bit keen in second place. And then your winner here. This brilliant racehorse, the winner of the French Guineas and the French Derby, St. Mark's Basilica. The outsider, El Drama, uh, out the back. El Drama runs pretty well. He finishes quite close up. And that's not because this is a weak coral eclipse. That's because of the pace. They went very steady in the early stages. The, there were some sub 12 second furlongs later on in the race, but the early fractions, according to course tracks, were really, really steady. At a time form speed figure in the low 80s for this, you'd expect well over 100 for it. And the finishing speed percentage is what tells us what happened here. You would expect a finishing speed percentage of 100.5. And that is data led on previous races run here over this trip of a mile and a quarter. But the last three furlongs of this coral eclipse, 109.2. St Mark's Basilica finished off the race 9.2% quicker through the final three furlongs than he ran the early stages of the contest. He quickened like a Mustang to win this. The crawling now turning in, Mishrif a bit too keen. Tom Marcand just trying to dictate a steady gallop on a Dave and now they'll begin to wind it up and it's St Mark's Basilica who has far too much speed for these. He quickens fantastically well and he comes home, remember, in softish ground in 36.19. He is a world-class racehorse, make no mistake about it, and he is miles better than the bare result. What would he have done to these if they'd gone a good gallop? I think he would have won by even further than the distance that he won here, which was clear daylight in the end. Mishrif, well, he was going best, three out, but he didn't find a lot. He didn't quicken. A Dave, well, he boxed on gamely and ran really well and got back past Mishrif. But look at St. Mark's Basilica, clearing away through that final furlong. Uh, he is a tremendous racehorse, and there's going to be a lot more to come from him when he's up in class and when he gets a better gallop to go at. He produced a fantastic time when he won in France. He is capable of running faster than this. But this was completely and utterly tactical, this Coral Eclipse. Four races were run over this distance at Sandown on Friday and on Saturday. And this was the slowest, and we'll illustrate that in a moment or two. But that doesn't mean this was the worst performance. This was the best performance of the weekend by a country mile. I think he is a real real prospect for big races going forward and just look at that that's what you've got to remember the finishing speed percentage 109.2 telling us that for a group one contest they just crawled early on and then finished off really strong well he did he finished stronger than the rest what do we make of Mishrif well some thought that uh, perhaps he needed the run perhaps he didn't like the ground perhaps he was too keen I think he's just beaten by a brilliant racehorse it was a steadily run Group one then, won by what I would say is a very fast horse. I think he'll always be best at around about a mile and a quarter. Mile and a half, uh, maybe, because the downside of the pedigree by Galileo, he's by Sayuni himself, and it's the family of Sotsas who won the arc. So there's a chance at a mile and a half, but I think this sort of trip will really suit him because he's so fast. What else have we got? The final three furlongs, I highlighted that a little bit earlier on, 36.19 seconds. Uh, that's that's really good uphill in softish ground uh, he really flew through those final three furlongs and they just couldn't live with him and he was the only horse in the race to run sub 12 furlongs for the furlongs seventh furlong eighth furlong and ninth furlong that's how superior he was to all of them Pedigree, I've just mentioned it, he's uh, Sayuni out of a Galileo mare. It's along the same lines as the Ark winner, uh, Sotsas. So uh, those that fancy him for the Ark will 
uh, take some sucker from that and he may well be, be aimed at to the arc somewhere down the line but I think Aidan O'Brien has uh, possibly the Sussex Stakes in mind he is entered in that Judmont International almost certainly in the, the Champion Stakes in Ireland that those races will be on the agenda possibly the arc later on and what what is the main thing about this horse well he is just a fast racehorse he's got loads and loads of speed and I think uh, he's one of the best horses in the world right now as classifications stand. I think he's an absolute superstar, trained by that man, Aidan O'Brien, who was winning his sixth Coral Eclipse. So that's St Mark's Basilica. I mentioned the fact that it was the slowest mile and a quarter race of the weekend at Sandown Park. And we can put that into a little bit of uh, context because we had some other good performances at this trip. And we'll look at some of them in detail in a moment or two. But let's just highlight what he did in comparison to the others that won their uh, races over this particular trip. Yukon Glen, he won on Friday, you'll remember, a strongly run race. And he was the fastest over this trip at 2 minutes 8.97, trained by uh, Jim Goldie. And the finishing speed percentage, 100.8. So he was rated superbly through this race to get the most out of him. You remember they went a very, very strong gallop and he finished off strongly. And that was a quick time. We then come to Saturday. The ground was slower. Macram, 2 minutes 9.11. Wink of an eye, 2.10.52. And St Mark's Basilica, the slowest, at 2.10.87. Does that mean if the four of them met, he'd come last? Oh, no. Oh no, because the sectionals tell us just how fast he can run. And if they all met and got a good gallop, he beat them, St Mark's Basilica. There's no doubt about that. Look at his finishing speed percentage, 109.2. It was nowhere near an evenly run affair. Macram and Wink of an Eye, they were strongly run races because they dipped under 100% in terms of finishing speed percentage. So uh, they have run really well in strongly run races. But St Mark's Basilica, he's much better than that. 21087. He can run loads faster than that. And it tells us that finishing times don't always paint the correct picture. So I've mentioned a wink of an eye who won a strongly run uh, handicap. And uh, let's have a look at the betting for that particular race, which took place on Saturday. He went off the five to two favourite. Rewired uh, was seven to one and, and backed. Mustazid seven to one. It was eight to one and, and bigger the rest. Uh, this is a, a really good handicap. I think it'll work out well. We'll take it uh, from the point that they're just turning into the home straight and have a look at uh, what happened here. There was some trouble in running uh, three furlongs out. I think that's an important point to make. And we'll pick out Wink of an Eye in Her Majesty the Queen's colours right back here. And he comes home very strongly to beat something enticing and Mustazid. And watch the passage that he gets through here and the move that Tom Marquand makes. And it's quite an impressive move. And I think it's the move of a very confident jockey. And of course, on this day, uh, he had a treble. Um, now he's boxed up there. He's got nowhere to go. He's being held in. The danger that's something from there. Look, he switches very, very quickly to get a gap. He didn't sit in there and wait and wait and hope he'd get space. He switched sharply left as soon as he saw a gap. That's a confident jockey at work. Now Wink of an Eye has got dead aim on the leaders. And this was really strongly run, this particular race. Uh, they went quite hard early on. 98.67, the finishing speed percentage, tells us that they're finishing slow, finishing just a little bit tired. And it was a very good test for some progressive horses. Back in second, something enticing has run really well, boxing on strongly. He did hang a little bit to his right and might need a little bit more headgear. And Mustazid was back in third place. Wink of an eye just eased down, rank, rated down a little bit in the closing stages and there might just be a tad more to come uh, from him. William Haggis trains him and you'll probably get a, a little bit more out of him. This is ideal for seeing what Tom Marcan does. That's the switch there. He's just gone out into that gap so he can, so he can attack this way. He could have just sat in. He could have just sat in there and waited and waited and waited and tr then try and come between horses but no he, he made a very quick decision to switch left and then he had clear daylight he had room to run and wink of an eye did not disappoint him when Tom McCann let him down and asked him uh, to go let me remind you that we would expect finishing speed percentage of 100.5 here but we only got 98.67 so they've just gone a little bit hard and the final furlong or the eighth furlong rather of 12.25 uh, was the quickest furlong 
in the race. Um, bear in mind they're coming uphill and racing on softish ground. They were certainly finishing a little bit uh, tired in this, but this will work out well. This is a good handicap and a wink of an eye has uh, done it well. But the main thing about that was the ride that Tom McCann gave this horse. So let's sum up what a wink of an eye did and what the race uh, means. Well, we know it was, it was strongly run, highlighted the, the finishing speed percentage. Uh, they went really hard at the early stages and they finished tired. The final time is quicker uh, than the Coral Eclipse, a function of just how it was run, not that Wink of an Eye is better than the Eclipse winner. The winner is a progressive son of Jubawi, and the point to make here is that Jubawis get better with racing and with age, and there'll be more to come from this fella. And the file f eighth furlong of 12.25 sealed the deal. It might not seem particularly quick, but the point I made was that it was uphill and it's on uh, softish ground, but he managed to fire that 12.25 in the eighth furlong and nothing could get near that according to the course track uh, sectionals. So, wink of an eye, very interesting horse going forward. Well, the fastest of the three 10 furlong races that were run on Saturday to Sandown was won by Macram and was won impressively uh, by him. This is how they bet for this, this race. And this is another race that will work out well. I'm pretty sure of that. Macram three to one, four to one classical wave, Sword Beach seven to one, Luigi Vampa 15 to two and well backed just before the off. And that's uh, an interesting point as we send them on their way because Luigi Vampa completely fluffs the start. Stall eight, look at that completely blows it and if I say to you now here and now that he managed to finish third that was a tremendous effort and the money was clearly well placed as far as he was concerned plus he gets a wide trip as well so he is one for your racing TV trackers definitely he's a horse uh, to follow at this sort of trip with a little bit of cut in the ground but he's got to stop fluffing the start like he did there it gave him absolutely no chance in terms of the winner well we're looking at this horse in here in Godolphin Blue and uh, James Doyle sat in fourth place in a race that was quite strongly run. The pace set by Restorer out in front, the grey horse, who uh, faded into fourth but has run really well given that he went uh, quite fast in the early stages. The final time, two minutes, 9.81, a pretty good time, but with a finishing speed percentage of 97.95. So they went pretty hard and got tired. Why did Macram win then? Well. He was just off the early pace. He got a good ride from James Doyle in that James went right round the inside on him and saved a little bit of ground. And Rhythmic Intent, who finished second, gave him a nice lead and he got plenty of cover and this horse settled and relaxed. So as they turn in, there he is. There's the winner, there's the second. And uh, Luigi Vampa is right round the outside and he's gonna hang to his left in the home straight. There he is in the black colors. He's making up ground. We'll just pick him out now because he gave away ground at the start and then he gave away ground coming round the bend. He was three or four wide. So he really has hampered his, his chances in this particular race. And that he finished third was absolutely remarkable, in my opinion. He's going to have to angle wide in a minute too. They come up the middle. They seem to eschew the, uh, the far rail. Seemingly they thought the better ground uh, was up the middle. Now Macron begins to make, make his charge and he goes past uh, Rhythmic Intent pretty comfortably. Luigi Vampa beginning to, to run on, but Macram now has got dead aim at Restorer, who's out in front. Uh, meanwhile, Luigi Vampa is uh, beginning to run on down the outside. It's a remarkable effort from him. Rhythmic Intent looked beat, didn't he? He looked like he was gonna drop away, but I think he was just briefly outpaced, and then he comes again with a big white face. He rallies to good effect, so he's a strong stayer at this trip. But watch Macram now and see what you think. Do you think he won with a little bit in hand? I think he's just eased down in the end by James Doyle and perhaps he won with just a little bit up his sleeve. So it was a very good effort from Macram, eye-catching stuff from Luigi Vampa. And I just want to tell you about Luigi Vampa's fourth and fifth furlongs in this race. 12.13 and 12.23, that's when he was playing catch-up after missing the break, he ran those course track sectionals trying to get in touch and then he paid for that a little bit later on. So we need to mark him up then on our racing TV uh, trackers. I think he'll definitely win a race in the near future. You might need to have a bit of time to get over this because he had quite a hard race. Uh, 
furlong four and furlong five, there they are, 12.13 and 12.23, just to catch up, just to get in touch, and then he was forced wide. So uh, that was a very good effort uh, from him, as it was from the winner, uh, Macram, who is uh, a horse to uh, keep an eye on. I think there might be a bit more to come from him. He's in the John Smith's Cup, so that, that might be a, a spot for him. That's a, a likely opportunity. Uh, for this progressive type and it was a good ride from James Dor, rating him very evenly through that race and going round the inside and saving plenty of ground, always the best way. Well time now to move away from Sandown Park and go to Haydock, uh, they stage a, a tremendous card on a Saturday and uh, we're going to have a look at to the old Newton Cup now. Uh, always very competitive this isn't it and uh, this year's renewal was particularly so Zabil champion five to one joint favorite with dark jedi long sider uh, 11 to 2 a lightly raced individual trained by sir mark prescott pablo escobar uh, 15 to 2 and well backed in from tens and it was uh, 15 to 2 win o'clock who'd also been well supported too but just go further down the list and pick out alunak 14s from 18s a little bit of late money and it was inspired money for here he bounces right back to his best for the inform Andrew Balding team. Let's take a look at it and see how this unfolded. This was pretty strongly run. Pablo Escobar is normally a, uh, held up, really, but they decided to make the running with him here. And uh, he ran really well in defeat. He went a pretty good gallop. They went pretty hard in this particular contest, and it produced a reasonable, reasonable time. Um, one horse to follow. Uh, we highlighted Luigi Vampa uh, in our previous contest. This is the horse from this race, My Frankel. Just one to keep an eye on as we, as we roll, it, roll it on. My Frankel eventually finishes in third place, but his final sectionals were quite impressive, and uh, he's a horse to keep a close eye on. Alunak, well, this was a, this was a, a really good effort to, from him. He'd been disappointing at uh, Royal Ascot, but here, back on softer ground, He's back to something like the form that he showed in 2020 when he was second to Fanny Logan in the Hardwick Stakes at Royal Ascot. And remember now, he's in a handicap off a mark of 102. Where is he in the race? Well, he's quite keen. He's down on the rail there. Uh, that's not really particularly relevant, the trip he's getting, because they come across towards uh, the stand side uh, in the home straight. He shows a remarkable turn of foot, I think, in this particular contest, given the conditions. They were pretty attritional, and he quickens up in fantastic style. And he beats some very good horses. Win o'clock, My Frankel, Midnight's Legacy, who uh, won last time up uh, at Epsom. These are really good horses that he beats, and he beats them hollow. I'm going to pick out Win o'clock, just a little bit keen, in the stripes here. So just keep an eye on. Uh, this horse who comes with a, with a good run but it was just a little bit keen in the early stages of the contest but runs really well to be second. My Frankel, Richard Kingskit still last on this horse. Watch him through the race because he comes home uh, very strongly indeed and uh, we're going to give him a sectional upgrade I think given what he did here. He'll be winning in the, the near future. But I was really impressed with Alan Acken and what he does here is he quickens up and I don't think many horses could do what, what he did. He ran the final three furlongs in 37.25 seconds and the 11th furlong in 12.13. So in quite a strongly run race, he has quickened up really well. You, not many horses can do that with cutting the ground. Not many can go that quick in the closing stages. That 12.13 in the 11th furlong, he's about to fire that. And that is really, really impressive from Alu. Now watch him, he's in behind horses towards the outside, carrying his head a little jauntily, and now he's going to quicken up. Here he goes. This is very impressive from Alunak. Now look at my Frankel, he's beginning to make his headway in behind in the blue and yellow colours. He's had to come from a lot further back than Alunak, who's away and gone now. He's gone past win o'clock. Midnight's Legacy fired one quick uh, sectional furlong to get involved and then could find no more. Alunak's now away, but my Frankel, the sectional upgrade is this, that he ran the final furlong in 13.23 seconds, as did the winner. They were exactly the same through the final furlong, 13.23. So he needs upgrading because he started his run from further back, and I think he'd have been a little bit closer if he hadn't been ridden so far back, and he's definitely a horse to follow. And this is a race to follow. It's very strong indeed some decent performances look at pablo escobar he hung in there for a long way having made 
uh, a pretty strong gallop out in front. So Alinax back to form. I've mentioned that he was Group 2 placed in 2020, that Hardwick Stakes, and he's very much back to that form here. Patient Tactics. Well, they did make a difference. He's often ridden quite close to the pace, but uh, Sylvester D'Souza dropped him in. And he seemed to enjoy being in behind horses and D'Souza waited before launching him in that 11th furlong that was very quick. The final three furlongs in the conditions, I think, was impressive. 37.25 is how he came home in those last three furlongs. And that one individual furlong of 12.13 was a real standout in the conditions that they faced at Haydock on Saturday. My Frankel is the sectional upgrade. The last furlong, 13.23, the same as the winner. You can see the winner is getting tired and slowing down in the final furlong. My Frankel likewise, but he still came home strongly from an unpromising position throughout the race. Let's go back to Haydock Park and have a look at the Lancashire Oaks which uh, looked uh, as if it was up to scratch this time around. Uh, we had uh, Mr. Angel in there, who ran so well in the Oaks uh, at Epsom, of course. But Alpinista was 11 to 4, favourite to Dubai Fountain, 100 to 30. Mr. Angel, 7 to 2. Tribal Craft, 8 to 1. Nine's La Lune, and it was 14 to 1 and uh, bigger uh, the rest. And it was Alpinista who prevailed. Here she is. Always handy in a steadily run affair. She beat Lady Hayes in the stripes just back there and Caballetta was back in third place. Let's send them on their way. They came across towards the, the stand side here as they did in the Alunac race. And Mr. Angel took them along at a very steady gallop. The finishing speed percentage tells us all we need to know about the, the pace they went, 109.51. So uh, coming out 9.51% quicker through the final three furlongs than the rest of the race. So it was a, it was a bit of a crawl and a sprint, this uh, Lancashire Oaks. Lady Hayes did well in the circumstances. She fired her last three furlongs of 36.27 from in behind. There she is in the stripes. So she's done pretty well from her position. But it was Alpinista who just quickened up the best. And you can see as we come to the two pole, you've got nearly every horse in contention. That's a function of the gallop that they went. It was steady, then they sprinted. Caballetta coming to uh, throw down a challenge towards the outside, but she sort of hung to her left a little bit in the closing stages. And under pressure, it was Alpinista who found the most. Mystery Angel um, just getting done for toe, really, and uh, running on again in the, in the closing stages, but she'd already been done for a turn of foot, and she finishes back in fourth place. But Alpinista for Samart Prescott and uh, Luke Morris, uh, just too good given how the race was run and backing up her listed success prior to this. Um, so I think the main feature of the race is, is just the pace that they went, really. It was just a crawl uh, and a sprint, and uh, Alpinista's clearly got a, a decent turn of foot. And I think this sort of ground suits her as well. Uh, it was pretty soft at uh, Haydock. Uh, a little bit messy, yeah, it was really. Lady Hayes just struggled for a bit of room uh, in behind, and it was undoubtedly a slowly run affair. What else can we say about this Lancashire Oaks? I think being across towards this side perhaps was better. The evidence of the, uh, the day at Haydock was that's where you wanted to be. Um, out in the middles, perhaps not where Lady Hayes wanted to be. And she might have been a bit closer if she'd have been edged a little bit closer to the stands rail. But uh, Alpinista, give him a good ride, a handy ride by Luke Morris, always close to that uh, steady pace. Uh, two horses can be upgraded. Lady Hayes and Tribal Craft, I thought, ran pretty well under Hayley Turner, for she was out in the middle of the track as well and made a little bit of uh, late headway. And she was perhaps not where you wanted to be. And Lady Hayes managed to fire the fastest final three furlongs. Interesting, isn't it? You'd think that uh, the winner would have done that, but no, Lady Hayes did 36.27, but she was coming from further back and Alpinista had a positional advantage uh, over the lady who nonetheless is clearly in very good form. And it was another group winner for Frankel. What a year Frankel's having. And uh, this was uh, another group race in the bag for that uh, leading stallion. So that was a couple of uh, excellent races from uh, Haydock Park. I think we've got a couple to follow uh, this week. Uh, Luigi Vampa, who got that wide trip at Sandown, uh, you remember, and, and blew the start as well, but came home quite strongly. And uh, my Frankel as well, who was given plenty to do in the Alunac race, but he came home well. So there too, for your racing TV tracker. And make no mistake, this week's verdict is all about St Mark's Basilica. He is a superstar.